Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video we are going to be doing the Transcendent Bird, uh, which is basically just floor 4. It's extremely, extremely hard. And uh, yeah, I've already recorded the bit where I beat it because uh, it took me ages and I had all my audio muted because I was watching YouTube whilst doing it because it is, unfortunately, a little bit RNG based. Just just, just a tad bit, or at least the, f the fourth phase is kind of irritating to a point where I can't be asked. Um, but let's go over what team I use. So I use this team. Of course, you've got New Thor, who's kind of need, literally needed for it. Magelda, who we once again is needed. This Deanne is extremely, extremely good. And if you don't have her, you, you're going to struggle. And Trait Melee, which of course you need the Relic for. When it comes to the set, we are running the increased basic stat boost by 10%. Because 10% basic stats, no one's going to complain about that. When it comes to gear, we have attack crit on Thor. We have uh, non-engraved perfect HP defense, which we got from the boxes on Magelda. We have HP defense, uh, perfect HP defense on Deanne, and then perfect attack crit on Melly. I'm pretty sure also my Thor gear is perfect attack crit. And then links wise, we got attack crit. We need Sorrel. The, the reason we actually have Sorrel is because she is our main DPS. Thor's going to be the main DPS throughout most of it, so you're going to sort of be praying that you pull her skills mostly. Uh, Magelda has HP defense because she is a little, she's like the one with the squishiest on the team. Diana's red Tarmiel because she will get targeted most of the time, mainly because the bird is red, she is green, so type advantage sort of thing. And then Melly has HP defense as going just because I forgot he had HP defense, but it still helps him tank a little bit, which is kind of nice. It's kind of what he needs. But this boss isn't... Uh, the first three phases are okay, the fourth phase is like, out of this world, completely stupid. But yeah, we'll get onto that when, uh, when I go through it, so let's get onto it. Okay, and now we are on to the actual bird itself. This took me several attempts. I've only beaten bird about four times in total. Uh, and this was the fourth time here. So there's no audio. That's because I was doing other things at the time. So, But let's get on to what the first phase gimmick is. So the first phase gimmick is basically every other turn he is going to... Disable, not not disable. He's going to do an AOE, which is going to give you a disable and I think an attack lower or a bleed. And you have to remove the uh, what do you call it, the disable. If not, he'll just wipe you. And the way you do that is what I normally do is I will use my uh, dance. I'll use my dance dance, my dance single type, my Magelda single target, and then my Thor uh, crit chance skill. Uh, sometimes I have Melee's AOE, which you do need Melee's relic. Unfortunately, you also need Magelda's relic. Um, and I, of course, keep Magellan's cleanse as well. Thor doesn't do too much damage on this first phase, like, without buff. She, she, she's okay. Uh, if you do have a 2-6, you will definitely feel the advantage of it. My Thor is 5-6. I got very, very lucky on one rotation. Like, a stupid amount of luck. Um, Miguel is 6-6, Deanne's 1-6, and then Melly is 6-6 as well. Deanne's going to be your main tank. You also want to see, if, you, if possible, you can get... You want to save level 2s. You want to save as many level 2s as humanly possible. Uh, as you can see here, I just stopped moving Thor. Thor's ultimate, even at 1-6, so the difference between 1-6 and 6-6, uh, 1, the difference is, is that you get, of course, the buff. You get the buff at 2-6 and above, which is sort of what you want every time you play the ultimate. That's only really why you would want 2-6. The damage between my my friend's 1-6 and my six, uh, my 5-6 isn't much. It's like a million, two million on max, which isn't too much. Bear in mind, it's a brand new festival. Here we got disabled, uh, and what you do is you play Melee's AoE first, you play the Magelda Cleanse, so you get the most out of it. And then we, uh, I actually play, I think I played the Thor, the other Thor, yeah, I still played the, the Thor crit chance skill. Because I need to save level 2 skills for the next phase. It doesn't matter what level 2 skills they are, they just have to be level 2 skills. They could be Deanne stances, Magelda cleanses, doesn't matter, as long as they're level 2. Damage is quite good. So we've got a merger for level 2, we've got two level 2 mergers, which is quite nice. And we've got the melee card in the middle. As you can see here, I'm sort of like, oh my god, I got two level twos. Because th th this is just me going crazy at this point. I've done this for so long. Just me going crazy. Uh, da -da -da -da. And basically, I just try and use all my skills I just don't need. This probably kills it. I'm pretty sure Thor may even kill it. The thing is, this demonic beast was made for you to have Thor. What I mean by that is the damage caps are 20% and 25%, which is stupid. And I want to phase two. Phase two is quite easy. Uh, basically, the gimmick is you play three level two skills on the second turn, so basically every other turn, and you get a shield. When your characters have that shield, they can deal damage. If they don't have a shield, they will struggle to deal damage. That's unfortunately what the gimmick is. Unless it's Thor, then she still is quite hard. Miguel, though, eh, not so much. But then now this turn uh, is where you need to play the level two skills. 
uh, because it's going to use a skill that will basically... Uh, I think it disables everything in your hand but cleansers, which is not really what you want because it is quite a, a hassle and you don't get the damage increase. What it is, it's that first skill there, which is the one you want to evade. You see, I used the four skills. I decided, no, 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 no. I'm pretty sure I reset again because I, I want to like I want to make sure I've got a good Thor skill for next phase. Sorry, not for next phase, for next turn. I just think Scarab move for a roll. Once again, keep make sure your entire team is as much HP as humanly possible. Of course, having Magelda HP defense will actually lower the amount of healing you get from Magelda because heal, uh, Magelda's healing or just healing in general is normally based off your character's attack. Uh, she, she is of course getting 10% basic stats from. Uh, the card set, she's getting 30% basic stats from Deanne, she's getting the boost from her own passive, but still it's not going to be too much. I see everyone on my team has a shield, now this is where everyone on my team is going to start dealing damage. So, I'm going to talk about the third phase gimmick now before we reach the third phase. Just so, whilst you're doing phase 2, you can save these cards. Amplify cards, any Amplify skill, Melio Magelda's, and Thor skills. Preferably you want Thor skills, but Amplify skills also work as well. And no other skill will work, basically, for next phase, for the gimmick. Which is, it has a, a stupid amount of immortality buffs, the only way to remove them is by using an Amplify or a Thor skill. Using an Amplify skill will give it a 30% damage increase buff up to 3 times, giving it a 9% damage increase. Using a Thor skill will remove all of those buffs. All of those uh, damage increase buffs. I think I show it here. The thing is, you need to place so many of them, that's the problem. And you've only really got about three turns. To, you, you've got four turns to do this. Every turn, yeah, he has the same mechanic as floor three, phase three, where he would just disable one type of skill. So first, it's stances. Second, it's debuffs. Third, it's buffs. And fourth, it's attack skills. If he gets to four, you've lost. Because that debuff is permanent. And also, then then you'd actually be able to deal damage. The remove your immortality stack would actually be with a Thor ultimate. See so here, first it's stances. I always thought it was stances, uh, debuffs, buffs, recovery skills, and then um, attack skills, then ultimates, but no. Unless they've changed it for this one. They have actually changed Bird quite a bit. Uh, floors 1 to 3 are very easy now. The damage caps on them, instead of being like 33%, 35%, 30%, and now for like 50%, which I guess it makes it easier to farm if you want to, of course, get to this quicker. But in my opinion, it's kind of stupid. I wouldn't even recommend farming this, unless you really, really want to, like, you really want to get those relic upgrade materials. I've done it, like, four times, and I got insanely lucky, and I can upgrade one relic. Yes, I got really lucky. I got three on one run, three on another, and then four on my most, four on this run. Which is my most recent one. As you can see here, I've got really lucky, and in two turns, I can go to the next phase. I'm sort of thinking, I want that Thor, this Thor skill here is the best Thor skill to have, because it's the two times crit damage one. A crit chance one on this phase may not hit crit, uh, damage cap because of a stupid gimmick, where it's like, it gets a stupid amount of HP related stats, to a point where, you know, a million damage is nothing. A million damage to this thing's HP is about half its health. But when it gets the buff, yeah, it's about 10%. It's stupid. It's absurd. But uh, I think here I sort of think what I gotta do, I'm like, okay, I want Thor's ult so I can trigger the revive. The revive is the best passive, by the way. If you get the other one, it's like, oh, if you get it below 20%, I think it's 20%, it like full heals, and it's damage caps 25%, so you have to get it sort of in that range to, to make sure you don't trigger the full heal, because the full heal also gives it stats as well. Of course, if you are running Freya instead of um, Melee, which you can do, I wouldn't recommend it, because you don't get all the damage reduction, which is sort of what you want. Also, I push Melee's ult here, for the reason that he's going to play a buff next skill, which is the normal like bird buff, where it's like the basic stats and the evade. And he plays it every two turns. So now I'm sort of on a two turn timer, I have to trigger revive next turn and then kill the turn after. So I'm sort of praying right now for lots of Thor skills. I'm looking at my hand like I've got lots of Thor skills, problem is, those two are going to merge. Which I was sort of scared about, because I was like, if they merge, I don't get anything good, it's kind of bad. Also, I can't get Thor's ult. Uh, and also, let's talk about the biggest gimmick of this floor. These debuffs. Not only is it 10% damage, increased damage taken when they stack up to 7, which they can stack up to 7, you take 500,000 damage, which is enough to basically kill anyone on this field. Yeah, it's that stupid. It's it's horrible. I don't, I don't know who decided to make a, a, a gimmick like that. It's stupid. Big damage. Uh, this is the HP buff. The bit where, like, the damage just doesn't really make sense. There we go, we got past it. We took the full heal. 
Uh, it kills, and we get the death damage on the full heal, which then triggers HP, which then it heals a little bit more. It also has a life steal skill, which I think is kind of stupid because. Uh, if you, for example, get it to the attack, that old mode, so I'll life steal. Uh, if you get it to the um, the attack related stat boost bit, and it uses the life steal ult, it can actually get it to the HP boost bit, and then it will start boosting its HP stupid amounts. I got it to once to like 20-ish percent, and it got to nearly 70 percent. It was like it was like 60, 70 percent is what it got to. And then here, I got really lucky and got a million Thor skills, and then we just wiped it. But it's not. If you get a good run, it's not too long of a run. But if you get really, really unlucky, like you don't pull any Thor cards, you're playing amplifier skills, you don't pull level twos. I'm going psycho right now because this is taking me ages to try and film this video. I spent ages last night trying to do it, and I spent about three runs this morning trying to do it as well. But yeah, there we go. Super simple. It's it's a pain. Like don't get me wrong, it's a massive pain. But if you really want to do it for like the minimal amount of stats you get, then go for it. I personally don't think it's worth it. Maybe you do. I don't. Uh, my guess is it'll probably get nerfed, or at least the final bit will get nerfed, because currently it's not something, it's more of a burden on players now. It's a, it's a grind, you don't get me wrong, you know, it's a catch game, it's meant to have a little bit of grind into it, but it feels like a whole separate double on I would actually prefer to farm rats than I would to farm this, because at least with rat, it's less torture than this. This is super RNG based. You don't put one character skills, you lose. Technically, rats the same, but I feel like there's a little bit more leniency with rat than in comparison uh, to this. But anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this helped you out. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.